Hey, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com coming back at you with some more PreSonus Studio One tutorials. So let's take a look at these buttons across the top. Now, as I mentioned, you may remember in one of my first videos, I'm not going to show you how every single thing works in Studio One because I don't use every single thing. <laughs> um, but I will show you the things I do use. Over here, let's focus over here. Here are basically your uh, different functions for your cursor. Okay, so the different tools, if you will. So in Pro Tools, you know how you can have slip mode and or you can have it be a scissor tool or a selector tool or a, I forget what they're all called, smart tool. This is kind of the same thing. Now, these do correspond on Mac with the numbers across your keyboard. So as I'm pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 1 through 8 correspond to all of these. Okay, sorry about that. So the first is the arrow tool. This is the tool you're going to use 90% of the time. Um, the second one is the range tool. I use this occasionally when I need to select a chunk of audio. So if I wanted to maybe take, let's say I need to take this bar of whatever this track is, some sort of drum. Uh, I want to take that and copy it. I can select it like this and then hit copy and then I can come over here somewhere and paste it. Okay. So that's the, the range tool lets you do that. If you're on the arrow tool, you can't do that. It just selects the whole piece of audio. Fun fact, however, if you have the range tool selected and you hold down the command key, I think it might be control on the PC, it turns it into the marquee tool temporarily. And then when you let go, it goes back to the arrow. Same thing if you have the the marquee tool selected, it changes to the arrow. If you have the scissor tool and you click it, it and you hold down command, it changes back to the arrow. This is the two tools I use the most are just arrow key and then I hit number three and flip to the scissor tool which lets me chop things up really easily. So if I was trying to maybe chop up these different tracks for these two bars, I would switch to the arrow key or to the scissor tool or knife tool I guess they call it, split tool, and I would come in here click all these to separate here and here and then let's say I wanted to move everything well I can hold down command and select this then hold down shift at the same time select all of these and then move them over whatever I want to do and actually copy them that's not what I wanted to do but anyway you get the idea I can quickly go in and maybe hold down command and change these the the crossover point between the two regions and then I let go and now I'm a scissor tool and I can chop things up again Pretty cool, uh, the ability to do that. That's one of the things I didn't like about Studio One to begin with compared to Pro Tools. Uh, in Pro Tools, you could essentially, depending on where you hovered, the tool would change. So you could select things if it was hovering up here, and you could grab and drag things if you hovered down here. For me, that's not a huge deal. Um, I can just hit number three and switch to the scissor tool when I need to cut, and the rest of the time I'm using the arrow tool. Now over here, this is like an eraser tool. I don't know why I would use this. It lets me delete things when I click on it not super helpful for me I would rather just click it <laughs> select the actual audio and then hit delete does the same thing right um, here are the different drawing tools and this has to do if you're drawing some automation only thing I could see using this for is something like a square or triangle wave where you want to draw in maybe some panning that goes back and forth really quickly or slowly you can use this for some of that type of stuff I've never actually used it mute tool not really helpful it mutes the piece of audio what I rather do is have the arrow tool select the piece of audio and hit shift M for mute and that mutes it out you'll see it change to a gray color here's the bend tool again don't use this one very much either but it allows you to uh, if you're if you're doing some like time stretching where you're you're doing some pocketing or something and you're stretching the audio to get it more in time that's the tool you use for that and then here's the listen tool don't use that either the question mark gonna say for another video because it's pretty cool and over here if you want to get into quantizing things or specifically kind of like Pro Tools beat detective it's simple it's kind of like that this is where you bring up that window and again there are some great tutorials out there on this I really don't use this feature I prefer to edit manually but you can come through you can strip out silence you can chop things up into each transient into each little piece of audio so you can then move them around and stretch them around uh, and then this gives you all the options for quantizing that audio once you chop it up okay so for just a quick example um, I can analyze this it found all the transients and then I can come over here and say uh, tell it to quantize and boom it moved them all around more in time with the song I'm gonna undo that because I don't need that because this drummer is awesome but that's what that's for okay and real quickly, uh, if you're not familiar with this, is just how smoothly we're going to quantize the grid on the screen. As you can see, there's a grid here. 
how basically how defined is the grid going to be when we start dragging things around. It defaults to 1 16th, I think. That's where I like to keep it. Uh, this has to do with, this adaptive button has to do with whether it's always going to gonna line things up when you're in snap mode which is like grid mode in Pro Tools when that's on anything you move is always going to be on the grid exactly this tells us how fine of a grid it's going to be snapped to and this tells us if it's going to snap always to the bar or always to the quantized number or if it's going to be more adaptive meaning if we zoom in and move it it's going to move more you know instead of being just 16th notes and we drag something around it might be 32nd notes and so it's more adaptive I leave it at adapted most of the time and then time based this basically all it says is across the top of the screen if I set it to seconds you'll see it just gives me the time base for this particular song if I set it to bars then it shows me the bars and that has to do with the grid as well so if you're doing a lot of quantizing and, and things are recorded to a click track or a tempo I leave th I leave this at bars almost all the time uh, unless it's something that wasn't recorded to a click and I'd like to see how long it is then I can switch it over there okay this video is getting a little bit longer because I wanted to cover all these buttons so thanks for sticking around with me another quick couple quick things this is the auto scroll button uh, if you hit F on the keyboard it turns that on and off this simply allows you when you're when you're zoomed in really closely and you hit play a lot of times you may want to stay looking at this piece of audio even though playback is moving over here so as we zoom in it, it goes off the screen and keeps going. If this is engaged, if auto scroll is on, then the screen keeps moving with the cursor. So as it keeps moving over, you'll see it keeps following along. And it's kind of annoying if you zoom in and it's on, then it looks like this and that gets a little dizzy. Cool thing about Studio One, if you have it on and you zoom in pretty closely, it actually automatically turns it off, which is nice. Oh, that's not good. And then here, right over here is cursor follows edit position this is kind of nice if you're doing a lot of editing and you click on something and you want the cursor to follow what you've clicked on um, that's actually not true never mind that doesn't do what I thought it would do so I'm gonna turn it off I never use it <laughs> and then over here there's a video player if you import video into your session this pops that up and back Okay, that's it for my <laughs> very specific how Joe uses these buttons in Studio One. Hopefully that opened your eyes to a few things, and we're going to move on. I'm going to talk about this cute little question mark in the next video. Thanks.